Well hello and welcome to my latest update on the meetings from the governing body. Uh, the latest meeting was last week and uh, last before Christmas. Particularly of interest to the public I think is the results of the consultations. If you'll recall that we consulted earlier in the year in terms of um, ceasing IVF in certain categories and also restricting gluten-free diet on prescription and also over-the-counter medicines. We had really good feedback from the public. As a result of those consultations, we've decided at this stage to take no further action on the IVF, but we may well revisit the, the consultation next year and we'll be thinking that through again. But we're very grateful for those who provide the time to give us some feedback on that. There was overwhelming support from the consultation in ceasing prescribing gluten-free food and that will come, come into play in early next year together with over-the-counter medicines. There was support for that but we think there's more work to be done still on that so that will come back for further discussion. If there are people out there who feel they have an exceptional need or case then they can be considered in terms of the gluten-free so nothing is a blanket to ban but it can be on exceptionality and exceptional means what it says exceptional can be considered. We also considered the five-year forward view for the work of GPs and we're looking to strengthen how we work with our GP colleagues, looking to move to three localities and looking how we wrap around services around those three localities. We also had a report on the overview of the People's Board and this is now the merger of the uh, Health and Wellbeing Board which is a statutory committee of the local authority together with the Community Safety Partnership and the Cabinet of the local authority will be uh, hopefully approving the governance arrangements, signing off for the People's Board. But it's a really exciting work going on. It's bringing together the third sector, the voluntary sector, uh, fire, police, ambulance, all the public sector organisations. And we know with our work across the next four years or so, if we don't change what we do, we have a funding gap of £21 million. And a lot of things we do, we do actually with the same families. So we're looking how we can work more efficiently across, and we're creating what's called an integrated care system across the whole borough. And it's really exciting, I think, and St Helens was mentioned both in the House of Commons last week as being a borough that doesn't have quite the same problems on delayed discharges as other areas, which is good news, but there's still, there are still issues we're working on. Together with two, we were quoted in a national local government journal as being really quite exciting. And because we're a borough-based organisation, we're coterminous with the local authority, we can do some really good work effectively together. So more of that will be, I'm no, no doubt, broadcast by the local authority as well. So look out the local press for that coming as well. Those are the key highlights from the governing body. And I take this opportunity to wish you all a very healthy and happy Christmas and New Year. Uh, look in the local press for if you need services over the holiday period in terms of the right care, the right place, the right time, the chemist, the walk-in centre. Obviously any will be under enormous pressure, so please only use that if it is what it says, an accident or emergency and look, you can use Rotor as well for out of house for more uh, primary care issues. So a very happy Christmas to everybody.